Hello, I'm Sister Joanne Iannotti from Wisdom House. I'm Art and Spirituality Coordinator here at Wisdom House. And today I'd like to invite you to a preview of the next show that will be in our gallery, our Marie Louise Trichet Gallery. The title of the show is Sacred Moments. And you'll have the opportunity when you come to the show to see the works of two women Connecticut artists, Ashby Carlisle and Lisa Bell. Time, as you know, is a very elusive thing. Sometimes we think in great swaths of times, like years or, or centuries. But when we look back at time, when we look back at the moments of time, we often realize that they are really the result. Time is really the result of sacred moments being threaded together. And these sacred moments we sometimes only appreciate in retrospect. So today I'd like to introduce you to our two artists, the show will open at Wisdom House on January 21st and will run through April 8th. So if you have the opportunity, come and join us during this time frame, and we'd be happy to have you experience the sacred moments through the art of Ashby Carlisle and Lisa Bell. Hello, I'm Lisa Bell. I'm a painter and illuminator, originally from Hartford, Connecticut. Um, my work is a combination of modern painting and medieval manuscript illumination. So it's interesting because it's two worlds colliding. Um, it's, uh, the inspiration comes from the age of faith, which is a little bit different, I think, from what most people are used to seeing now. So we have art for art's sake, and I'm kind of a throwback making art for faith's sake. So the texts are all traditional. They come from um, biblical passages, holy sonnets, scripture, liturgy, hymns, um, religious poetry, so a lot of different sources, but they're all traditional. So I guess the part that's new and totally non-traditional is the way I'm using a lot of the materials. This is a painting that's a passage from Philippians. Um, it's the same text in Latin and English, so it's bilingual, um, and the, the text forms the shape of a cross. So it has a lot of medieval roots in that it's very illustrative and tells a story. So here you have the cross of Christ, and this is the Latin passage. This is the same in English that forms the, the arms of the cross. Um, the passage finishes at the bottom, and it turns red to illustrate the blood of Christ running down the hill of Golgotha. Um, and then over here is something that you see um, that's really typical in a lot of medieval paintings. So it's the skull of Adam. Golgotha means the place of the skull, so all the painters would put the skull of Adam at the foot of the cross with the blood of Christ running down onto it to signify that we're redeemed from the very beginning of time. Up at the top, it's a lot of the same text, but collaged all together and blurred out, so it makes a crown of thorns over the, the, the head of Christ um, with all the, the blood on the, the quote, thorn tops. Um, it also forms the floor plan of a cathedral. It's actually inspired by the floor plan of Santiago de Compostela. Um, so here's the entrance and the nave and then the long transept and the ambulatory with all the chapels running around the top. Um, so all that is really kind of old, old school and really medievally traditional. The part that's not is that it's um, written in gouache instead of ink. There's not actually any ink in this one, I don't think. It's all paint. Um, so it's got a lot of big painterly strokes and it's all paint on printmaking paper and then at the top where all the collage is done um, it's a lot of acrylic and a lot of matte medium and a lot of glue so it builds it up and gives it this three-dimensional quality. Um, the other thing that I do a lot that, that gives it a, a really kind of a physical presence is the framing um, which is what I do by trade. So. I pull a lot not just from <clears throat> manuscripts but also from altar pieces. Um, there's a big medieval tradition of portable art because they didn't, you didn't have museums yet um, and people were, were very set on practicing their faith no matter where they were so you'd have portable devotional altar pieces or portable devotional works of art that you could take with you when you traveled um, or that you could set up on your home altar. So this is um, the first three verses of Psalm 1, it's Beatus Vir. Um, you hear it, if you listen to a lot of choral music, you hear it a lot because it starts off a lot of services. Um, but it's about the, the way of the, the faithful and how it has a lot of roots. Um, 
she'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So this is the, the Latin verses around the tree, and then it's in English at the bottom. Um, the, the tree itself is actually inspired by the Shaker gift drawings. So the Shakers are um, they're a religious sect that uh, used to be very prominent in New England. And at some point, they had a series of visions of trees presented to them by the Holy Ghost. So this is uh, very much inspired by those. So it's got the roots of the tree, like the roots of faith, reaching all around the English verses at the bottom to ground it. Um, the roots of the, the trees are taken from a wonderful hike that I took in the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee one time. So, and it's, uh, in terms of media, it's a lot of gouache. That's which, where you see the, the paint um, dripping with heaviness coming out of the apples. Um, there's colored pencil going on. There's um, a technique with masking fluid resist and a lot of watercolor. And then a collage, like a gold crown reaching up to heaven at the top and then a, a red kind of a flood reaching further down into the earth. So it reaches up to heaven and down into the earth at the same time. You're invited to come to their show, which will open on January 21st, and it will open with an artist lecture at 3.30 p.m. So please come if you are in the area.